the moon like they never saw I should have told you that I loved you One more time, one more time, one more time I should have told you that I loved you One more time, one more time, one more time I should have told you that I loved you every night Oh, that's on my mind Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to crochet a super cute tote slash shopping bag. So this one right here made of granny squares and you can wear both like this and also like that. So I really hope you guys enjoy today's video. If you do make sure you give a massive thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel so you can watch more videos like this one. So enjoy the video and let's begin! So for today's video I'm going to be using fabric scissors, a small pair of scissors, a 4 millimeters hook, measuring tape, some pants, a 100% cotton fabric. I'm using this one right here in the color green. You guys can choose any other fabric that you guys prefer to create linings for your bags. And for my yarns, I'm going to be using these ones right here. They are 100% cotton yarns and they are also three ply, all of them right here. So I'm going to be using a green, orange, pink and this one which is kind of like a natural thread and this one is kind of like a creamy color. I'm also going to be using sewing threads and my sewing machine to sew my lining together. So to create the bag, we are going to be creating three different parts for the bag. So the front, the back and the straps. So the front of my bag will be with granny squares. So this is the granny square that I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video. And then we are going to be creating the straps of the bag. So this is how my strap looks like. And it's quite a different pattern that I'm going to be showing you guys for the straps. It's very secured and very sturdy as well. So it's a really good pattern for straps. And then for my last piece, which is the back, I'm going to be creating a larger kind of square, just going up with double crochets. So I'm going to be showing you guys first how to create the granny square. So I'm going to be starting right here with my green. So we are going to be starting with the magic ring. So you're going to be holding your yarn like this, you're going to wrap it around your fingers, cross them, and then you're going to bring it forward. That's how I do, I know there's so many other ways to create magic rings. And then you're going to go through this thread and then grabbing the other one and pass it to the front. And then you're just going to release it and that's how we create a magic ring and kind of pull just a little bit so it secures that one in place. So we are going to be working with half double crochets for this project. So we are going to be starting here with a chain of two and then we are going to wrap the yarn around the hook. You're going to go through the magic ring, grabbing the yarn and keeping that on the hook so you have three loops on the hook right here. And then now you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops together. Just like this. So now we are going to be creating one more. So now we are going to be chaining two. And then we are going to be creating three half double crochets. Chain two. And then three more half double crochets chain two and then the last three half double crochets. So to finish it off we are going to be chaining two, we are going to be pulling this yarn to close the magic ring. You can pull nice and tight so it closes completely here in the middle and then into this very first chain that you find. So you're going to be counting one, two into the second chain. We are going to be slip stitching both sides in place. So right here I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn and fasten off. You can just pull the yarn and fasten off. So now you guys can choose any other color to be the next one. So I'm going to be doing all of my squares uh, colorful. So in the next clip when I finish the green square you will see all of the different colors that I've created. If you guys want to um, copy the same ones. For example for this one I've done green orange and pink. So for this one right here, I'm going to be doing green, pink and then orange. So now I'm going to get here my pink yarn. So now with your next yarn, we are going to be creating a slip knot. 
and then we are going to be attaching into any of the corners here just on top of the chain two that we've created so I'm going to be choosing this one right here so you go through that and you create a slip stitch so now when we get into each of these corners right here we are going to be doing a shell so the shell it's basically chaining two this is of course the first one and then you're gonna go and create right here into the chain two space you're going to be creating two half double crochets and then you're going to be chaining two and then you're going to be creating three more half double crochets right here remember that we are counting the chain two right at the beginning as a half double crochet as well so it's basically three half double crochets a chain of two and then three half double crochets when you move into the next corner you're going to be chaining one and then we are going to be creating the next shell into the next corner right here on top of the chain two so you're going to be creating three half double crochets a chain of two and then three more half double crochets So now you guys can go ahead and repeat the same into the last two corners and also make sure to chain one in between each shell right here. When you get at the end you're going to chain one as we were doing in between each of the shells and then we are going to be connecting to the other side right here with a slip stitch. So right here we can chain one and fasten off and then we are going to be doing the next row with the orange. So we are going to be creating a slip knot and attaching into any of the corners of the granny square. So I'm going to be doing on this one right here. And then on this corner you're going to be doing exactly as we did into this one. So on each corner it's going to be a shell. And then when we get into the chain one space we are going to be creating three half double crochets. So I'm going to be creating here my first corner. So every time you finish a little sequence or a shell or a three half double crochets, we have to chain one so we can go into the next one. So on top of the chain one space, we are going to be creating three half double crochets. When you finish the three half double crochets, you're going to chain one and then move into the next shell. So the next chain two space. And then right here we are going to be creating another shell. So this is the sequence that we are going to be following for this row. So I'm going to be showing you guys just one more here on this side. So now we are going to chain one after here the shell and then on top of the chain one space we are going to be creating three half double crochets. And then from here we are going to chain one and continue the sequence all the way around and then I'll meet you guys right at the end. And then you're going to be chaining one and connecting into the other side right here with a slip stitch. So now we can chain one and fasten off. So now we are going to be doing the last row in which is with the cream all the way around following the same steps as I showed you guys previously. So the same as before, you're going to be creating a slip knot and then you're going to be attaching into any of the corners. So following the same steps, we are going to chain two and then create here the shell, chain one. And then on top of each of these, we are going to be doing exactly as we did here into the previous row. So we're going to create a three half double crochets. So right here, three half double crochets. So chain one, three half double crochets on top of the next chain one space, chain one and then shell on top of shell, chain one and then you're going to be repeating the same steps all the way around and then I'll meet you guys right at the end and then I'm going to be chaining one and connecting here to the other side with a slip stitch. Just like on the other rows, now we can fasten off completely. So I'm going to chain one, cut the yarn and fasten off. Now I'm just going to show you guys how I weave in all of these yarns right here before we continue. I forgot to mention right at the beginning, we are also going to be using a tapestry needle. 
to sew the squares and everything together. So I thread here my tapestry needle and then I move as close as possible to the other same color yarn that I have here at the back. So you're just gonna go through a couple of stitches until you get very close to the other yarn. And then right here I create a triple knot. And then I just cut my yarn right here. So that's how I weave in. So that's how I'm going to be weaving in this runny square right here as we already have the lining right at the back so no one will see the back of the granny square. So now I'm just going to be doing the same to all of the other threads here at the back. So that's how we create the granny square. I do also change the color in the middle as well. I don't do only green. Sometimes I do pink orange and green as well so I do mix and match all of the colors so now I'm going to be showing you guys in a little swatch how I made this part right here in which is the back of the bag so the first thing we are going to be needing is basically to know the sizing of the bag that you're doing I'm doing this size right here so it's kind of like a standard tote bag and we are going to be measuring basically here the width of the bag so that's around 36 centimeters so as you guys can see my bag right here is also 36 centimeters so we are going to be creating a slip knot and we are going to be starting right here our chain so i've done here a chain of 13 just to show you guys exactly how to do it so without stretching my chain right here it reaches to nine centimeters as you guys can see but if i stretch a little bit it reaches to ten and a half centimeters so that's what you're going to be doing to reach to 36 centimeters i've done a chain of 49 but i'm just going to be showing you guys a little swatch so i'm just going to remove a little bit the chains right here and i'm going to be showing you guys how i go up here on the row and also how i change the color to create the back piece of the bag so to go up the row what you're going to be doing is holding this last one in place and then you're going to be chaining three this is only for the very first row the second is a little bit different and then into that one that you're holding you're going to be creating your first half double crochet and then from here you're going to be creating half double crochets all the way down here the chain until the very last chain right here so now to create the rows going up you're going to be chaining two turn project we are going to be skipping this very first stitch right here in which is for the chain already then into the second stitch we are going to be starting right here with our half double crochet so now you're going to be creating half double crochets all the way down this row and then I'll meet you guys right at the end. The last one is basically on top of the chain that we've created here at the beginning. And the one that you're gonna get is basically this curved one right here. So you're gonna get that stitch and you're going to be creating your last half double crochet into that stitch. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the color because this is basically the steps that we are going to be doing. We are going to be making the yarn right here as tight as possible. I like to leave it on my hook as you can see. And then you're going to be cutting just a little bit of the yarn. So you're gonna get the yarn color that you want to transition to. You're going to be placing it underneath here, the cream yarn. And then right here you're going to be making a knot, just one knot. And you're going to be moving this knot very close to basically the base right here. So now with the cream yarn you're going to be making a knot very close to the previous knot. And then right here you're going to be pulling this yarn that it's on the hook and the orange one which is the one you're transitioning to and then you're going to be pulling them tight until both knots meet right here now you can cut these two ends right here very very close to the knot and that's how i 
transitioning to the next color. I do prefer like this, but you guys can do exactly how we did also here to the granny square. And then from here, I'm going to be continuing with my rows. So you're going to be chaining two and then skipping the first one into the second, a half double crochet. And then you're going to be continuing right here with the half double crochets. So now I'm going to show you guys how many rows I've done. So from this little swatch that I showed you guys, you're going to be creating this massive square right here for the back of the bag, as you guys can see. So for this one right here, I've started with a chain of 49, as I told you guys already, and I've created 39 rows going up and changing my yarns as well into these little lines here, colorful lines in kind of between the cream color that I really liked. So I've done two rows for the orange and the pink and then one row with the green because I didn't have enough yarn. This is basically what I have left. So these are all the granny squares right here that I've created. As you can see, they are all colorful as I told you guys already. So in total right here, I have 16 granny squares and I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be laying all of them to get to the sizing that I want or how I discovered the sizing that I wanted. So I grabbed this bag right here and what I did, I started to add all of the squares flat into the bag Yeah, so that's how I decided. So I'm going to be doing four by four and then covering all of these as well. So as you guys can see, I have 16 granny squares right here. And then you guys can see that this one that I've created, the back piece, it's basically the same size as the granny squares. As you can see, I have here the back piece aligned with the squares right at the top here. And then when I move down, you guys can see that it's nicely aligned with the ones here at the bottom as well. So you want to make sure that you create the back piece the same size as the granny squares when they are all together. So now I'm going to be showing you guys how I create my straps and then we are going to be starting to join all of the pieces together. So I'm just going to be measuring here the strap without pulling. I'm just kind of measuring so you guys know exactly the sizing that I did and if you guys want to make it bigger you guys can as well so the sizing right here for my strap is 56 centimeters uh, it's around 22 inches I'm going to be showing you guys the pattern but I've done for the strap 84 rows of what I'm going to be showing you guys now but I just want to mention everything here so I can show you guys the little swatch of the pattern for the strap so let me show you guys that i'm going to be doing in another color so i'm going to be doing in orange so i can show you guys exactly how i do because the cream yarn kind of like blends here with my table so the first thing you're going to be doing is deciding the width of the strap that you want i've done here two and a half centimeters so one inch wide right here so once you know the width of your strap you're going to be creating that basically of chains so i've done a chain of five so one two three four and five you're going to be skipping the very first one you're going to be going into the second one you're going to go through that chain you're going to be grabbing the yarn and keeping that on the hook and then you're gonna go into the next one, grabbing the yarn and keeping that on the hook. So you're going to be creating little loops here on the hook. And then here the last one. The amount of chains, it's the amount of loops that you're going to be having here um, on the hook. So I have five chains, I have five loops. So now is the time that we are going to be starting with the pattern. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through through here the first little loop. So now we are going to yarn over and then we are going to be pulling through two loops here on the hook, the working yarn and basically the one from the base that we've created. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, 
pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So I'm getting very close here to show you guys what I'm going to be doing next. As you can see, we have these little loops right here in between these lines. There is like a little loop right here. So what you're going to be doing, that's where we are going to be pulling up a loop. This one right here, it's already from this one. So we are going to be pulling from here. So one, two, three, four, and then five right here. So you're going to go through that loop. You're going to pull up a loop, keeping that on the hook. And then right here. And then pulling up a loop. And then the next one right here. And then for the last one, we are going to get this loop right here on the side, but we are going to get also the one from the back. So these two right here, and that's going to be our last little loop. So now we have again five loops here on the hook. So now we are going to be repeating the same as we did into the previous row. Yarn over, pull through one to start, and then yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. So that's basically the pattern for the straps. I'm going to be doing one more. So you're going to be skipping this first one right here. You're gonna go into the next loop, the one right at the top. You're going to pull up a loop. And then the next one. And then the next one right here. And then the last one, if you guys didn't see properly, it's basically inserting it through this little stitch right here, grabbing this one and that one right here. So inserting it right here and grabbing those two loops right there. And then here you have, again, the five loops on the hook. You always want to make sure that you have the five loops here so it's straight on both sides and you always want to make sure that you get the same ones as you got from the previous row and then right here we are going to be starting again and that's how we create the strap of the tote bag that's basically the pattern that I decided to use and this is how it looks like once you have a lot of rows completed so I've created 84 rows, as I told you guys already. Each of these little lines right here counts as one row. So I have 84 of these lines from the bottom all the way to the top of the strap. And before we start to attach everything together, we have to create the lining before we close the bag because then you can cut exactly to the size you need. So I'm just going to be folding my fabric right here. So this is the end, I have all the rest that way. I'm just going to be folding the fabric until I have the size of my bag. Yeah, okay, so I'm happy with that. So I don't have to create a sewing for the bottom right here as I have it folded from kind of the back to the front. So I'm cutting right here. So from this point and then continuing, I'm cutting around 78 centimeters. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my fabric all the way around, leaving the seam allowance for the sides and also the top here. So now we are going to be starting to attach all of the pieces together and we are going to be starting here with the granny squares. Okay, I'm just going to first lay all of them flat and then I'm going to be starting to move them around so the colors, they don't match. So this is the squares all completed. I tried to move them around so the colors don't match like on the sides too much because some of them, they are the same colors. So once you have all of your granny squares, you wanna make sure that you move them on the reverse. 
and what I like to do so they don't move around is to pin them all in place. So I'm going to be moving it right here and I'm going to zoom in right here with you guys so I can show you guys how to sew them like this. So you're going to be getting your tapestry needle and then also a little bit of the same yarn as this very last row here around the granny square. So you're going to be threading your needle with the yarn. I'm going to be removing this pin as I'm going to be sewing these two together. So how I like to sew these kind of granny squares when I don't want any gaps in between them, I'm going to be starting from here. So I'm going to be grabbing one stitch from the chain to here and then the same on the other side and sew those two together and I'm going to be creating a knot right here. So now to sew them together I'm not going to be grabbing only one stitch from here at the back, I'm going to be grabbing the entire stitch, so I found here my first one and I'm going to be doing the same here into the other side. So I'm going to kind of turn it like this so I can find this one. So I grab, there's two little loops right here. So I'm going to be grabbing those two and sew them together. And then I'm going to be choosing my next one and match it to the other side and sew it together. So that's how I usually sew my granny squares because then I think they look really pretty like when they are sewed together. When you get into the chain one space, so here is the chain one and here is the chain one. What I like to do is just to go through the entire stitch, just through this little gap right here. Go through that one and also this one right here and you sew them together. So that's how I usually do with the chain one. And then from here guys, we are just going to be sewing all the way down. So I'm here into my last two and then I'm gonna get one stitch from here, the chain two and then one from the other side and just sew them close. I'm gonna go through that one one more time and then I will go through this loop before I go through. I go through this loop and I'll pull tight to fasten off. So now I'm just gonna go through a couple of stitches here to weave in. And then I'm gonna choose a stitch, I'm gonna go through that stitch twice. And then on the last one, I'm going to fasten off right here. And then here I just cut my yarn. So it's nice and secured in place. And then with this one, I just separate the yarn like this and then I go through a stitch with one of the sides and then right here I just create a little knot and then I just cut my yarn. What I'm going to be doing now is sewing all of them like this first as I showed you guys and then I'm just going to be using the same technique to sew them right here going across just to gather all of them together. So I'm going to be doing that and then when I'm back I'll have all this sewed together. So I have finished here the sewing for all of the squares as you guys can see. So I have the right side of the back facing the right side here of the squares. We are going to be putting them together and we are basically going to be sewing all the way around. A very simple sewing just grabbing one stitch from one side, one stitch from the other and sewing together just like what we did right here. Remember not to sew the top, it's just the side, the bottom and the other side.
So this is how it looks once you have on the right side. This is the front and this is the back, but you can actually wear both sides as well. I'm going to be attaching now both straps before we create the lining because I want to have everything ready and then we can sew here um, the lining with already the straps kind of attached right here so we can sew right on top. I'm going to be using this side right here as the right side of my strap. I think I'm going to be putting it right here. Maybe you put one centimeter kind of on the inside just like a tiny bit on the inside so you have space to sew this in place and then I'm just going to be pinning that in place and then I'm going to be doing that on the other side and then you can repeat to the back as well So to sew in place, it's going to be very simple. We are going to be sewing all the way around and then you're going to be creating a cross here with the sewing as well. You want to make sure that the straps are super secured in place. I'm going to be showing you guys one of them and then I'm going to be doing the other ones off the camera. So as you guys can see right here, I have finished sewing both straps in place. So now I'm going to be sewing the lining so we can actually sew it around here of the bag. So we are going to be turning the bag here on the reverse. So we are going to be placing one side of the fabric underneath the bag. You wanna make sure that you have a little bit of seam allowance right at the top. So we can do like a little hem and then we're gonna go all the way around and place the other part right on top so i have exactly like half a centimeter to do the sewing here on the sides so that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be pinning this in place so i know exactly where i have to do my sewing I'm going to be removing the bag. I just do this guys to make sure that the sizing is correct because you don't want to do it too big or too small otherwise it's not going to look nice here on the bag. So what I'm going to be doing now is create straight sewings closing both sides and also I'm going to go through a zigzag stitch on both sides as well. So now we are going to be creating the hemming, but first we're going to see if it fits on the bag. You want to turn on the right side again. We are going to be inserting the lining inside, right here of the bag, just to make sure that it fits the bag before we continue. Yeah, it fits perfectly. So I have basically the reverse of the fabric, as you can see the sewing is right here touching here the wrong side of the bag so basically the inside of the bag and then i have the right side of the fabric as you guys can see right here on the inside because that's what people will be able to see on the inside so you don't want to have the wrong side on the inside so i'm going to be measuring right here around like a finger or so just to do a little hemming so I think I'm going to be cutting it right here. So this is something that you guys have to decide before you actually cut the fabric. So I'm going to be cutting it right here. So 
we have the fabric right here so you guys will be folding once very tiny and then twice like this and that's how we are going to be doing the hemming and you guys can also pin this in place if you guys prefer I'm not gonna be pinning this in place but if you guys want you can pin all the way around and then sew the hemming in place I'm gonna go ahead and do this one So I have my bag right here, it's on the right side and I finished the lining as you can see and it fits perfectly here on top of my bag so now we are going to be sewing the lining all the way around. So I'm going to be using a thread and a needle. So now we are going to be turning the bag inside out so we are going to be having the reverse on the outside and we are going to also turn inside out here the lining. So now the reverse is on the inside and the right side is on the outside. We are going to be inserting it all the way through here. Like this is a little bit easier to, to sew it in place. So we are going to get very close here to the edge and then we are going to be sewing. I'm going to be zooming in right here for you guys. So I'm going to be starting here on the side. I'm going to be putting side here with side, going through a little stitch on the project and then a little bit here on the lining. I'm going to be sewing that together and I'm gonna go through the loop here to fasten off. And then I'm just gonna go around and sewing the lining here in place, grabbing a little bit of the yarn and a little bit of the fabric. When I get here at the end, I just fasten off and I cut my thread. So now we can turn the bag here on the right side again. And I think our bag is done. <laughs> I'm very excited about this one. I never done a bag before like this. So the lining fits perfectly around the bag as you guys can see and you still have a little bit of space inside if I could show you guys like this if I hold it like this it actually like fits like a glove inside here of the bag so this is how basically you guys want it to fit inside the bag but you still want to have a little bit of space as you can see there is a little bit of movement inside here but yeah, I think this is it. I think we are done. So yeah, guys, this is everything for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this super cute bag right here. As you can see, I'm very excited for the person that is going to win this bag. So if you guys want to win this bag plus five more handmade items, make sure to check my description below for more details. And thank you guys so much for watching again and see you on my next video. Bye.